Okay, Bobby, you brought all this stuff. Yeah, it's I in got, here. I got the catnip, the sulfur. Okay, squeaky toy. Squeaky toy. Okay, okay. And these b- bag of souls. Throw it in. Throw it in. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, guys, uh, what oh. are you doing? Um, none of your business, Becky. What? Why is there a hole in the ground? None of your business. Why is it smoking? Uh, oh, do you hear that? Why is there <laughs> weird flaming sounds coming out? What? What is that? We're summoning um something. Summoning something. Also known as Lucifer. Lucifer. up hi bobby konnichiwa welcome to the free rotation podcast thanks for joining us on this not on soundcloud devilishly devilishly good episode and we're not talking eggs folks it's gonna be a little hellish oh okay and i'm okay. becky it's I- getting hot in here oh my god <laughs> i thought about it i thought the puns would be good and then i realized that i had the two of you to back up the puns haha <laughs> herpes Oh my god. Anyways, <laughs> I'm Becky. I'm joined by my friend Bobby, also a host. Hi. And our lovely also co-host slash producer slash faux hawk enthusiast, Angela. Yeah. Which her name is kind of relates to our episode today. Yes, I am angelic. She did fall from the heavens. But we're actually talking about the devil. That's right. Okay, that's Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> I got little horns. Y'all his can't pompadour see it. pompadour hides his horns. Oh, but, duh. But yeah, welcome back. It's been a it's been a little bit, but you know, it's the summertime. We all got stuff going on. Summertime. Like work. Summertime. So. I was burning buildings down with orphans inside. <laughs> and now he's a Sith. Because <laughs> that's how you become a Sith. There's, there, we don't deal in absolutes. No, we do deal in absolutes. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure you do deal in absolutes, but Shh. sure. Speaking of Siths, I don't think that actually relates to what we're talking about, but today we're talking about... The one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who got called the devil, Lucifer. And now we're not talking about a specific Lucifer today. We are talking about Lucifer as in the guy that everybody calls the devil. I felt like that intro was a lot better in my head than it came out. But that's what we're rolling with today. I thought it was great. Thanks. Yeah, it was Lucifer adorable. gave it an 8 to 10. Oh. No, he gave it a 69 out of 69. Oh. I was going to say, would it be a 666? Six, 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 six. out of 666. Six, he gave six. it a 6.66. Yeah, 6 six. out of 666. Yeah. Six, six, six. But yeah, so this is kind of a series we're starting um, because, well, for my reasoning was that Lucifer season four came out on Netflix and hell yeah, that was better than Game of Thrones. And Good Omens came out last week. And it was re-signed for season five, which will be the series finale. Yeah. It's going to wrap everything up. Yeah. And then we had Good Omens come out. We've had a lot of just really good like TV and movies coming out with uh, stuff about Lucifer. But the thing is, a lot of people don't know the true origins of Lucifer. So we're going to kind of cover it in three different episodes. My episode today is going to be about the myths, the general myths of Lucifer. Nothing related to the Christian mythology, which is what Angela will be covering next week. And yes. the, I'll be doing him a pop culture. Because Give, you're going to be doing his pop culture? Fuck yeah. Oh my God. Stop eating Quacker Jack. <laughs> Quacker Jack is Lucifer. That's how he's watching us. That's why he glows red yeah. when I hit him. It's because I have the hue lights on, Angie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of, the, some of the background. Because once again, I've discovered Christianity has stolen absolutely everything and made it its own thing. That's so what I'm going to give you some. We're going to go back. We're going to throw it back to like the time before Christianity stole everything. So here's the thing. Lucifer, which most people know means light bringer or light bearer in Latin, was also known as Phosphorus or Ephorus, the morning star, and is personified as a male figure bearing a torch. Lucifer had almost no legend, but in poetry, he was also seen as the Herald of Dawn. Isn't that name of a magic card? Herald of Dawn? I think it is. It's like Aurelia or something, right? Aurelia's Lucifer. It makes sense. She's white red. We see what you did there, wizards. But just so you know, Lucifer is also the Latin name given to the planet Venus as the morning star in ancient Rome. And is often 
used for mythological or religious figures associated with the planet. Which I thought was really cool because I always thought Pluto was like the personification of the devil in Roman mythology. I always thought that was it. But I, I, I was think wrong. It, you kind of get that because uh, Greek and Roman mythology <clears throat> sort of intersecting with the idea of what Hades is as the underworld. Mm-hmm. But Ooh. Lucifer himself was never related to the underworld, surprisingly. He was actually related to more of the dawn or the light bringer, which is completely opposite of what you would take as somebody who would be the devil or Satan. Do you think Lucifer and Hades fuck? Angie, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> I just like how Bobby just says something. You just get this look on your face like, but why does he exist? Well, I started thinking about it, and then I was going to jump ahead to something, and I was like, don't do it. Don't. Like once, like when Hades gets, Hades like, is like, hey, Persephone, you know, I'm going to try something a little different, a little spice it up while you're up on Earth during the springtime and shit or whatever. I'm going to go fuck Hades. I mean, I'm going to go fuck Lucifer He just quick. fucks himself. Yeah. No, he fucks um, Cerebrus. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> bestiality. <laughs> it has three heads. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, this also was a, something interesting I found out, is that due to the unique movements and discontinuous appearance of Venus in the night sky, mythology would often involve these figures falling from the heavens to Earth to the underworld. Ooh. Like, the way Venus would move in the night sky is you would see her toward the beginning of the morning, morning. and then toward the end of the night you couldn't mm-hmm. see them anymore and, or see the planet anymore, so as the horizon ended you would see it as if it was falling from the night sky. Almost as if there is a figure that fell from the heaven and became part of the underworld. <coughs> you okay? Do you need a cough drop? Might need a cough drop. Where's Aiden when you need a cough like, drop? Like to the point that the Romans actually identified Venus as two di- by two different names. They right. thought it was two different. So the morning star was Lucifer, and the evening star was something that's not important because we're not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Go Google it yourself if you want that answer. That's exactly. Right. The fall from heaven is seen in different stories throughout history. The Sumerian goddess Inanna or Ishtar, the parallel cycle to Venus, where she is able to descend to the netherworld where she is killed and then resurrected three days later to return to the heavens. And that is seen in Inanna's descent into the underworld, which once again is very similar to a story we have read several times in history um, involving a guy named Jesus. Yeah, that's got to fucking hurt. Mm-hmm. Like keep going down, getting killed. It's got to fucking like put a crick in your neck, right? After a while. Yeah. I, I remember the Romans called the evening star Vesper, which Christianity also took that to mean evening rituals. Mm-hmm. So at Christmas time, you do your Christmas Vespers. Right. It is actual. Oh, I know. You're Catholic. You know. No, no, no. Not only that. It was. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Vesper, is that why they, that's how they named the scooters Vespas? Yes, I think so. Because you fall down a lot. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have to re-rise again, but it happens yeah. every three days because the battery <laughs> dies. you're cussing, oh, yeah. you're telling people to go to hell because you've fallen. Oh my God, this is the best timeline. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, Sumer- if you read anything about Sumerian history, it, there's a lot of basis in Christianity into Sumerian mythology as well. Um, so there's always an there's always an interesting counterpoint to the fact that what we've seen previously in other mythos and other religions is that we're starting to see this sort of start to parallel things that we read in Christ in Christian mythology. So also in Canaanite mythology, the Morning Star is pers- personified by the god Atar, who had attempted to occupy the throne of ba- Baal. Baal. I can't say words. Balal. 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 No, Balal's different. Yeah, Balal's oh, different. Yeah. This is Baal. Baal? Mm. I found that in Diablo. It's pronounced Baal. Isn't Balal's in something pop culture right now, isn't it? Wasn't it one of the Conjuring movies or something? Yes, yeah, I think so. It was Baal, and he's also in Diablo. Yep. Like, if you ever need to learn how to pronounce some of these words, just, you just play, play Diablo. Diablo. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he finding out he could not, he descended into the underworld. So he had to, so basically what happened is Atar decided that he was going to, uh, want to attempt to get, he wanted the throne. So it was a game of thrones almost. Uh, and, um, since he had to, uh, he had to descend to the underworld to, in order to occupy that throne. So there's another, uh, addition. I mean, we could talk about Greek mythology and Hades and the fact that he's the God of the underworld, but that's a lot of stuff that's previously been covered before. Um, So there's always been a mythos surrounding a lot of different mythology regarding the ruler of the underworld and how somebody becomes the ruler of the underworld. So in Greek mythology, funny enough, Lucifer was said to be the fabled son of Aurora, Cephalus, and the father of Sex. Sex? 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 like sex, but... Is it sex? Father of sex? Sex, sex. Oh. We look to you because you're the smart one. I think it's pronounced more like kaich. Oh. Like like a kite? Or kaiju. Ooh. Yikes. 
So, I mean, you even see a personification of Lucifer in Greek mythology. Um, Leo Taxel, who apparently was this really jackassy guy. Um, this is a random fact I found, by the way. Claimed that Freemasonry is associated with worshiping Lucifer. Uh, it was later called the Taxel Host, as he alleged that leading Freemasons had to address the 23 Supreme Confederate Councils of the World into believing that Lucifer was God in opposition of the evil god Adonai, and that while supporters of Freemasonry did contend that the Freemason scholars did speak about Lucifer, the Luciferian path or the energies of Lucifer, they were referring to the Morning Star, the Light Bearer, or the search for light against the dark. Apparently, anti-Masonic groups got some problems with this. So what we're seeing... <laughs> Essentially, is that um, the name Lucifer, even though the connotation of it has been throughout throughout history in different sort of religions, once you start relating it back to Christianity, which, funny enough, one of my um, one of the facts I have is that uh, Lucifer is never actually referenced in the Bible. Are you ready to hear the pronunciation? Yeah, I didn't hear it. K chicks. K chicks. Oh, like Chet Mix. Chet Mix. Chet Mix is the devil, Angie. Maybe if I turn my phone up, we could hear it better. <laughs> I know. I hear it again. Seeks. 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 Okay. Seeks. I seeks you. But so so uh, the, the big. Oh shit! God, do- I need you to stop talking. <laughs> Maybe that has something to do with the um, ripper sticks. Stinks. Ooh, could be. Yeah. But yeah, some Christian writers have also applied. <laughs> oh you got a hairball. Yeah. Lucifer, yeah, coughing oh, up a hairball. Oh my god, I'm possessed. How would you feel like if Lucifer crawled out of your throat? That'd be. I'd be pretty okay with it. Yeah, fair. You'd have some hairballs though for a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, when well, you have a lot of cats and some of them are furry, you I'm, do find awkward. On fur. a random note, I wonder how many people have actually named their cats Lucifer. Oh, a couple I'm of heavy sure metal fans have. Remember to. Remember, I had a D and D character I named Lucifer. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Was it like a cat person? It was. <laughs> it was a Tabaxi bard, right? Yeah. Nice. That makes a lot of sense. I think Lucifer would be a bard. Oh, mm-hmm. and it was Lyra Dombringer, the magic card. That's right. Lyra Dombringer. Oh, so they were just they stealing shit magic, the gathering. Well, of course, they fucking appropriated all Greek culture for there fucking Theros. There is a Herald of the Dawn, though. Yeah, there's yeah. a bunch of... Yeah, I know this because it's in my Angel Commander deck somewhere. <laughs> Anyways, some Christian writers have applied Lucifer as a heavenly being casted from heaven as used in the book of Isaiah. However, Lucifer, as the term Lucifer was not described as the devil um, at any point in time. Matter of fact, the metaphor for the morning star that Isaiah 14, 12 applied to a king of Babylon gave rise to the general use of the Latin word morning star as the original name of the devil before his fall from grace. However, the only thing it references is that I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven and interpreting the passage in Isaiah is an allegory of Satan's fall from heaven. So once again, the name Lucifer being appropriated from any other mythology into Christian mythology, but there is actually no reference to Lucifer in the Bible. Can we disagree that Christians and Catholics are like the worst? I mean, there's nothing wrong with appropriating things from different religions. If you look throughout history, most religions have their own separate mythos of the creation myth, how things were created in general. The problem is everybody's stuck on this idea that Christianity is the first to come up with these ideas, and that's not the case. False. So as a result of all this, Lucifer has become the byword for Satan or the devil in the church and in popular literature. Um, but really where we see this is it's more of a pop culture reference is why Lucifer became such a thing. So you really see it in Dante's Inferno, Juiced Vendor Von Del's Lucifer, and John Milton's Paradise Lost. If you've ever played the video game Dante's Inferno, a.k.a. AKA you know there's actually a book that this was written by. Um, no. It's, yeah. Satan is portrayed as a giant demon frozen mid-breast in ice at the center of hell. Um, Satan is said to have three faces and a pair of bat-like wings affixed to under each chin. That really must suck. As Satan beats his wings, he creates a cold wind that continues to freeze the ice surrounding him and other centers in the ninth circle. The winds he creates are felt throughout the other circles of hell, and in his three mouths he chews on Judas, Brutus, and Cassius. Uh, scholars consider Satan to be a once splendid being, the most perfect of God's creatures, which is what a lot of people believe Lucifer to be, if you ever read the Bible in general. From all personality has now been drained away. Satan, also known as Lucifer, and this is sort of the where this mythology has now come from, was with Dante's Inferno, was that he was formerly a, an angel of light and once tried to usurp God's power. With that punishment, God banished Satan out of heaven into an eternity in hell as the ultimate sinner. Um, and due to that, Dante illustrates a less powerful Satan, um, as a slobbering wordless monster that receives the same punishments in hell as a result of the sinners. 
So that's sort of the overview. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of mythology outside of Christian mythology for Lucifer, um, unless you look more so into what was, I guess, Sumerian religion, which... Angie, you want to throw this down? Not- this is, it's Angie's a gen- genius. Angie's about to throw some well, knowledge at you. As y'all know, I'm obsessed with Zechariah Stitchin and the Sumerian and ancient Mesopotamian, Sumerian, and even further beyond that in the, uh, and I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, I'm not very good at pronunciation, in the Enuma Elish, which is the story of creation, but like the original story of creation that all the other cre- creation stories have stolen from. are derivatives of. Yeah. And I know I've referenced the planet Tiamat before. We briefly touched on it. And Tiamat sat between Mars and Jupiter. But in the old creation story, it personifies Tiamat. And it talks about her. She's the only female god. Basically, think of Gaia, but on a, on a universal scale. Yeah. And a, a lot of the translation is lost. We don't quite understand why Tiamat had such a problem with the other gods. Why mm-hmm. she broke away. But basically what you get is that she's just tired. She's she's their mother. She created all of them. So Tiamat created 11 other gods that were up in the heavens with her. And she chose to pull away from them. She got tired of them being stuck in their ways. They weren't progressive. So Tiamat uh, rebelled against them. She sound familiar? Yeah. Tiamat? Mm-hmm. And uh, Tiamat stood against them, and Tiamat created three things to stand with her. She created um, a lover slash son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She created mm-hmm. the 11 celestial beings that went into the heavens with her, and she created um, a group of serpent people. Dragons mm-hmm. and serpents is what she created. Do you remember what caused the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden? It was a serpent. It was a serpent. That was a representative of the devil. Mm-hmm. And what I think is also cool about that, you said she made a son slash lover out of herself. She Adam did. Adam and Eve, take that yep. rib. Yeah. Well, so she, Tiamat stood against them, and she, since she was the mother of the gods and had created them and their destinies and their fates, she also created what's called the Tablet of Destiny, and she took it from the all-powerful god, and she gave it to her son who, remember, became her husband. Right. And she gave him the ability to speak things into existence, and whatever he said was was as is. Mm-hmm. So the other gods, they couldn't stand up to Tiamat, not only because she was their mother, but because she had given the fate of the Tablets of Destiny, and they were nervous. They, they sent people to stand against her, but when they got there, they would come back because Tiamat would talk to them and be like, do you not realize that they sent you to die? Instead of coming themselves. This is the problem. Mm-hmm. Scapegoats, essentially. So they, um, the gods came forth with their own son, um, who's become known as Marduk, but he had a different name. And Marduk mm-hmm. said, if I do this, I want the Tablet of Destinies. I want y'all to give me the right to speak into existence anything I want and never, ever speak against what I say. And they're like, yeah, okay, you know, we can yeah. do that. We need Tiamat to, do- to go. You yeah. know, she's... Messing shit up with her, you know, female list. Oh, yeah. Sexism. She's, she's PMSing, clearly. Yes, she's speaking out against the male, you know. Even back in yeah. the day, misogyny was a thing. Yeah. So Marduk went, and he he was given a great weapon to destroy her. He gathered the winds. Um, he had seven great winds. And he had a, cha- a Stormbringer chariot and lightning bolts, which, I mean, think about how this is feeding into the Zeus you know, right. mythologies. Right. And he tethered four horses to it, which um, he took from the universe. And when he was finished, he put them back. Four horsemen. Yeah. Four ho- yeah, exactly. It's starting to all come together. And the together. horse had nebula in the universe. So he, he had all these great weapons, and he goes up to Tiamat. As he gets closer, her son starts becoming, he just kind of breaks down. Mm-hmm. It says his maneuvers are off, which I'm not really sure what that means, but... When you think about planetary movements. Right. Because remember, this was a personification of planets. Right. So Tiamat sat between Jupiter and Mars. She created um, the planet Nibiru, which was yeah. the 12th planet out. So that's that's what we're talking about here. And his maneuvers were off. Mm-hmm. And Marduk, she opened her mouth to cast a charm and speak him out of existence. And he shoved an evil wind in her throat. And he destroyed her. Then he shot her in the bowels. And he disemboweled her and killed her. That's aggressive. Because she was never able to speak into existence what she needed. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. He he foiled her. Right. So what he did was the gods had told him, when you kill her, separate her. 
So she can't grow back. Mm -hmm. So he took, okay, here's the other thing. Tima and her son, their names were basically fresh water and salt water. Mm -hmm. They needed them separated. Yeah. So Tima, they took her essence, her water, and put it into the universe and covered it so it could never be come back to Earth. They guarded it. And you know what's interesting is out in the universe right now is an entire, like, three worlds worth of water that just mm -hmm. sits up in the universe. Yep. Just right. stationary. Right. And frozen, too, This right? was before yeah. we yeah. even knew it was there. Yeah. Also frozen, because I want you to think back to Dante's Inferno. Mm -hmm. Right. Because about the, ninth, the frozen. Yeah, because everybody personifies hell as this, like, mm -hmm. flaming place. But the ninth circle was a frozen yeah. tundra, basically. Right. Yeah. So then from what was left of her. So that was her fresh water put up there. Mm -hmm. Her salt water stayed behind. And they created a planet, planet Earth. And then her son, they w went back and they took him. And they also scattered her blood around the universe. And it basically just tore her apart. Fucked so her she, she just couldn't come yeah. back together. Mm -hmm. And then they took her son and um, he brought him back. And his eternal punishment for standing against them was they cut open his blood vessels. And from his blood, they created humans. Because, oh, and they also created land from Tiamat. Right. So when they took her water, land rose up out of the deeps in the dark, which Genesis says the exact same thing, yep. almost word for word, as this ancient scripture did, this ancient creation story. So it created land. He took the blood of this God who rebelled and created people. And he said, I want to create these people specifically to toil under the gods and to worship us. That's their only purpose is to do this one thing for us. And the other gods couldn't stand against him because they had given him absolute power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the creation story of, of us. And so on the scientific side, so this, this was the Mesopotamian story. The Sumerian story tells the exact same story, but as planet movements. Okay. Instead of personifying them right. like the Mesopotamian did. So basically, Tiamat sat between Mars and Jupiter. Mm-hmm. There's a 12th planet in the solar system called Nibiru that uh, has a really crazy rotation. It takes it about 4 million years to go around the oh, sun wow. and come back. And it's very chaotic. And when it came through on its last rotation, one of its moons, Europa, which is now a moon of Jupiter, hit Tiamat and destroyed it. So when Tiamat exploded, parts of her shoved into the earth and created land, caused land to rise up from the oceans. And as it passed through Mars, it obliterated. It's basically like a nuclear blast. It just yeah. killed everything that was on Mars. Because um, we'll get into something in a minute. But it, it obliterated Mars. And pieces of the asteroid flung out to Venus and knocked it off rotation. And caused uh, all the other planets are counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. Venus rotates clockwise and straight up. So she was knocked completely off of her rotation. And an enormous cloud of debris and dust and methane sits in the atmosphere so it basically hides the planet. Mm -hmm. And the asteroid belt was, is what's left over from Tiamat. Wow. So even when you look at the Milky Way right now, uh, scientists will agree that something horrible happened in our galaxy. Something awful, awful happened in right. the Milky Way. And you can even see the dust cloud like a tail mm -hmm. at the end of the Milky Way that the other galaxies are just perfect spheres. But the Milky Way has this tail of dust mm -hmm. and debris behind it. And it's because of the quote-unquote recent you know billions of years ago yeah. but pretty recent for a universe yeah so there's a lot of evidence that a planet was hit and became the asteroid belt and destroyed yeah but that creation story sounds very similar to the christian mythos right okay so uh in this in this story lucifer was who tiamat created mm -hmm. and he's the one who stood with her against Marduk and the ancient gods and he actually is his blood that created humans so when you think about it the ultimate hell for Lucifer and the ultimate punishment remember he was thrown to hell yeah which was earth I, I just want to put that out there yeah. we talk about hell on earth well it is right we, we are hell and he was thrown here it's his eternal punishment but his blood created us which gives us a divinity because we mm -hmm. were created in the image of these gods to worship them, but never quite achieve that level. Mm -hmm. So I, always, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that's cool. And then, you know, Tiamat's creations, you know, when it, during the collision and her destruction, the serpents and the dragons were left over because they weren't punished. They were innocent. Yeah. They were put here. All the things she created, they were put on earth with us. 
Yeah. And, and the thing is, like, if you look at any sort of this, if you look at, and I don't know if it's maybe because it's more of a pop culture thing at this point, or if it's because people have spent more time, like, looking at these older stories. But if you ever read the story of Lucifer, a lot of times now, it's that he believed that God or humans needed to have some sort of free will, whereas God created them in the, his perfect image. You know, mm-hmm. Lucifer's thought process was that these are imperfect beings that should be able to have free will. Right. Because remember, we were created just specifically to toil for the gods, do their work, and worship them. Right. So, And Lucifer did not believe that. No. He believed that you've created these beings who have... That's what a lot of the new interpretation of the Garden of Eden is, is that not to tempt Adam and Eve from God, but rather give them right. the chance to have free will. I mean, even will. the Bible calls it the tree of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. You're giving us free will. I, And... and this relates back to the story of the Nephilim with the 13 Gregory who were left behind to watch us and how each of them fell from grace because they took pity on us and showed us how to use fire. Right. And how to wear clothes and Which that protect is actually, ourselves from the elements. It's actually referenced. The Nephilim are actually referenced in the Bible. It's like two sentences at most, but it mm-hmm. references the fact that these angels came down and taught us things. Like if you actually sit there and study what the Bible is talking about with the creation story, God created mankind just to be there it wasn't like he created them for any sort of free will or any sort of anything that we stand for at this we were point. an ant farm yeah we were almost an ant farm but these angels which if you think about it the nephilim are kind of uh, almost the same as uh the mm-hmm. lucifer story they were thrown from heaven for giving mankind a chance or for yeah. intermingling with mankind in the first place mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and when you consider that we were created from this divine blood so to speak we we do have the ability to to be elevated. Mm-hmm. But right. what also is interesting is if you think about it, what does in Latin, what does Lucifer mean? Light bringer. He's the light bringer. He yep. brought us into the light. Mm-hmm. So you have to think you have to kind of take that interpretation as well as like what? Why would something so horrific? The idea that Lucifer is this devil that's going to. You know, we're all going to help if we follow anything he says, which to be fair, this is not what this episode's about. It's talking about the interpretations of Lucifer. Uh, Mm -hmm. Why would his name mean light bringer, light bear? He bears a torch. He's the he's a herald Mm -hmm. of dawn. What is that? Why would that be what it means if that's not if there was not an interpretation that was not what we've seen in the past? Victor's Mm -hmm. right. History. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, look at it. I don't think I mean, you don't see any sort of reference to lucifer or anything like that in pagan mythology other than you see mm-hmm. in greek mythology hades but he wasn't an evil character he was the ruler of the underworld right mm-hmm. and when you think about this creation story the ancient sumerians and mesopotamia and, the, and tiamat and you when you think of marduk as god that we know mm-hmm. because he is the one true god because he established himself as that when he told them i will stand against tiamat but this is all mine and i will be the only one and you have to agree to this before I'll do it. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. We don't care. Yeah. I mean, you can have this section of the, you know, universe. wide universe. Yeah. And he stood against Lucifer and Tiamat, which it, it, the her son's name wasn't Lucifer, but I can't quite remember what it was. It, it's, it's like Ansu or Apsu, which Apsu meant um, clear water uh, allows light to pass through. Sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he stood against him. <laughs> Because they wanted knowledge to be free yep. and they wanted to be progressive and get out of this idea that you have to be worshipped. But I think, and I think if you watch different, and I will get into this more with Bobby's episode, but if you watch the interpretations of a lot of the shows regarding Lucifer, or if you even read like Neil Gaiman did the Sandman series, which that has Lucifer in it, which is what the TV show is based on. They don't personify him as just the devil. They personify him as an angel who fell from heaven. Yeah. And you kind of see that with other TV shows as well. It's You get that sense that they want him to be evil, but there's an interpretation of why he's evil. It's mm-hmm. not because, you know, he was created to be the antithesis of God. He was created as an angel who felt that mankind was not getting their fair share, fair share of what it is. So I was wondering if I could read this section from the uh, Enuma Elish for you. Okay. Sure. Okay. And I, I just want you to see the similarities between what we're talking about yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. This is talking about after Marduk defeated Tiamat. He split her like a shellfish into two parts. Half of her, he sat up in the ceiling of the sky. He pulled down the bar and posted guards. He ordered them not to allow her waters to escape. 
He crossed the heavens and surveyed the regions. He squared Apsu's quarters, the abode of Nidumund. As the Lord measured the dimensions of Apsu, the great abode, the likeness he fixed as Ishara. Uh, Ishara's earth. Yeah. The great abode Ishara, which he made the firmament. A new Enlil and Ea, he made occupy their places. Blah, 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 blah. And this is going on how he defined years and blah, blah, blah. Okay. It was Kingu who contrived the upright. Kingu is the other name for Apsu, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the Lucifer character. He, it was Kingu who contrived the uprising and caused Tiamat to rebel and join battle. So they're saying that he spoke into her ear and gave her knowledge. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's very familiar. Right. Mm-hmm. They bound him, holding him before Ea. They imposed on him his guilt and severed his blood vessels. Out of his blood they fashioned humankind. He sat down rejoicing, imposed upon it the service, and let free the gods. After Ea the wise had created humankind, he imposed upon it the services of the gods, the toil that was beyond human comprehension. As artfully planned by Marduk, did Nehemiah create Marduk, the god of the kings, divided. All of the Anunnaki above and below, he assigned them to Anu to guard his instructions. Three hundred in the heavens he stationed as a guard. But it's the fact that he instilled knowledge into right. Tiamat. Right. Which has been the consistent thing with Lucifer is that he's in, he's always been a figure that's either established knowledge or free will or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So, But yeah. And when you think about, like, when you see Pan, the Lucifer characters, he's always teaching kids. Right. Trying to, um, you know, think about the Pan and he, he calls the kids to him and then he teaches them, hey, this is what they're not telling you. Right. This is this is knowledge, and whether knowledge is good or evil, who knows? I think it's up to it's subjective. Mm-hmm. Knowledge can be evil, like depends how you use it. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's not evil itself. It's more neutral. It depends on how you right. Use. Right. And knowledge is just knowledge. But yeah, so that's really all we really had for the mythos of Lucifer. But you know, we'll get more so into the Christian mythology. I didn't really want to go into like Dante's Inferno and Paradise Lost because that is a very heavily Christian mm-hmm. idea of it. But I think it really does set the tone for why we sort of see Lucifer as this figure of hell versus mm-hmm. just uh, you know what was an angelic being that fell from heaven in the Christian I mythology. I did want to briefly touch on uh, Dante's Inferno because it does talk about how. Lucifer is punished. And remember Mars, Venus, and Earth were all three affected by Lucifer and Tiamat's yeah. punishment. So Europa wasn't a part of Jupiter. It was a part of Tiamat that became thrown into Jupiter's orbit after the, you know, chaotic event. Yeah. Wh- whatever happened that, that caused it. That's why Europa is so different from anything to do with Jupiter. It's a, a, an ocean mm-hmm. that's encased in ice and when you think about the seven layers or the layers of hell um lucifer's head and his torso was encased in ice yeah so when you think about mars being what would have been the heart earth is the body and the feet would have been towards venus it, it's very interesting because venus is is the hottest planet in the solar system venus is associated with lucifer it's the hottest. It's can s- nothing can live there. Mm-hmm. It used to be said that um, celestial beings lived on Venus, and and now I, I read some stuff where it says it's like the staging area for souls. <laughs> I mean, who knows? But exactly. Well, it gives you an ex- ex- yeah, and e- at least it gives you an explanation of how the world became to de- how the uh, mm-hmm. solar system became into being. I can totally buy a planetary collision. All the evidence is there to support this. Including the fact that the asteroid belt hasn't settled. It's still in a chaotic, you know, crazy formation where it was flung out. Mm -hmm. And it's still settling. Everything is still settling. Yeah. I mean, if we want to go back and beyond to what created all this. Okay, that, I don't think our minds can handle that. No. We, it's hard for me to even envision 400 billion years ago. Anything else, guys? Anything you want to add? I learned a lot today. I think it's good to know sort of a basis, just a base, because we what we know is what we've been taught in church and what we see in pop culture. But to see that these these allegories or these metaphors for what Lucifer was previously or where we've seen these stories before is important as a kind of a foundation for where we're going to go, especially Mm -hmm. in these episodes, because then now we know, you know, if something comes up in an episode about pop culture, it's based on what 
we've seen previously. It's not just because Mm -hmm. they've just come up with something out of their ass. It's there is a basis. You know, there's a thing that there's a creation story for everything and that not necessarily the Christian creation story is the correct one. Christianity Mm -hmm. is a recent thing. Yeah. And it's we can see how Christianity has stolen and taken and and it's changed. Yeah. The the knowledge. Which there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to acknowledge the fact that these things a lot of stories are reused throughout history Mm -hmm. because there's only so many times you can make up a creation story. What I'm excited about is, and I thought about talking about it a little bit was like the devil at the crossroads, the devil in pop, but that's more of a pop culture thing. So Mm -hmm. that's what I'm excited to talk about is like the devil at the crossroad, old scratch. Yeah. uh, Another thing. And I was going to say this for next week, but we are talking about Venus and I'm your fire. Uh, uh, you know how the Bible makes a reference that to God, a day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. There's yeah. really no time. Interesting, interestingly enough, when Venus was thrown out of her rotation, she and she started spinning clockwise and her rotation slowed because she's she's the only planet now that sits straight up. She's completely right. messed up. She's tilt free. It takes it's shorter amount of time for a year than a day for Venus. Mm hmm. I that's want you fun. to think about that's that. Fun. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. A day lasts far. It's like three of our years. Yeah. Three Earth years to complete a day. Right. For Venus. But a year for it is like uh, 322 d- of our days. Right. Which I thought is interesting. That's that crazy. Because it t- it, she just is just kind of sitting there now. And she's dead. And. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. I totally forgot. Like the best thing. So in 1975 ish, we sent our first transmission into space that had like our DNA code. Yeah. Um, we identified the population of Earth, and um, I think it was called like the Ansarubi Code or yeah. something like that. Well, we got a response, and it was in England in the form of an, a huge crop circle, but the crop circle read like a scroll. Yeah, and it it had the human DNA with an extra strand of DNA. That's spooky. And then it had a weird. picture of what the species looked like cuz we you know it sent up pictures of our people who our leaders were you know it, things about humanity so th- it responded with their dna code a picture of what they looked like and then it had so we had sent up nine planets they sent back 12 and um but pluto wasn't one of them yeah and they uh, were way ahead of our time pluto's never been a planet pluto's apparently. a little boy and they identified so in the history they identified three planets that had life which was Tiamat, Mars, and Earth, all had life on it. So they came back with these. It, it was interesting. I mean, there was a lots of other stuff. Yeah. And they identified the world as having 12.5 billion. Right. A world. And it, it just, and at the time, I think the Earth had 3 billion. And it, it was just incredible the amount of information that came back on this. So when you hear about crop circles, uh, this, this is, uh, ever since this code back in the 70s, we re- know that this is the way they communicate. Yeah. Well, Probably something basic and enormous that they pretty much just kind of etch a sketch on the... <laughs> right. The, <laughs> well, and internet, if you want to like comment and Sorry, critique the fact that we've talked about all this, let's just remember Angie has been on this Bigfoot kick and the FBI in the 70s investigated Bigfoot, just FYI. So... Yeah. Oh, I know I sound like a crazy person, but here's the thing. I don't dismiss anything because... I'm sure the kernel of truth is somewhere in the middle of all of it. And his name is Sanders. Pro- yes. Uh, <laughs> fried chicken. <laughs> I, you just a kernel and I was like, Sanders, I'm hungry. That's yeah, me too. Right. Or when you Colonel think Mustard. About it, Ooh, Colonel Mustard. All of these stories are kind of the same. We can't dismiss it. And when you get into the details of quantum physics, it does prove that there is a thought, an enormous... I'm sorry, boo. I'll stop talking about it. <laughs> You're scaring boo-boo. Yeah, but she, Wu doesn't want the knowledge. Okay. But it just proves that there's a thought. Uh, just a thought, not yeah. not anything. But that something mm. exists. Something is there. The tree and of you knowledge know what, is Becky, out there. Yesterday when we were at the planetarium in, in Macon, and it showed like the view of all of the, ga- the universe. Yeah. And you could see north and south, but you couldn't see east and west because of the debris. I mean, think about it. The explosion. Yeah. We can't see. Also, though, if you go and look up the things we've talked about, I would like you to look up the Horsehead Nebula because it references Marduk. Yeah. And it's also, horses. you can also look at it as the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Right. I mean, these same themes. <laughs> and another thing I wanted to say is that I think things that are named, they're identified, they're named. 
I think the names will always stay with it, no matter yeah. what it is that name follows. Because think about the name Lucifer that has traveled with this one being thing. Yeah. And it, it's always named people who don't even know what Rome named it will call it the Lightbringer. Yeah. It's interesting to me that something that's named will always have the same name. Yeah. No matter who discovers it, quote unquote, or names it. So, like, I was reading once that your name is, is determined, you know, y- y- the universe knows who you are yeah. and what your name will be. And the Bible states, you know, God knew you before you were born. But I think that your name was just always meant to be Well, if you ever read any sort of, um, in any sort of paganism and anything that involves a ritual, they tell you the most, the most powerful thing you can use in a ritual is somebody's name. Mm-hmm. Because that's how you identify them. Right. Their true name. Their so true name. If somebody tells you, I really feel like I should have been born this with this name, that's probably most likely what they should have been born as with yeah. that name. That's why, you know, getting a little political here. If someone feels that they are born in the wrong body, who are we to argue with them? Yeah. Exactly. Who cares? Well, I don't know. I mean, Bobby feels like he should have been, you know. Sassy Squatch. Sa- I feel like I should have been a cat. I'm, I'm okay where I'm, I'm happy at. where I am. You well, we'll go into detail about what you want later. Ooh. Becky wants a claw vagina. I she do. Wants a metal Ooh, claw that, sound, that, that sounds flies painful. out of her vagina. I just think it would be a lot of fun. We don't have to get into that. Okay, thanks guys. This is a great episode. <laughs> Love you. Bye. <laughs> oh wait. Uh, oh. Uh, I don't even know where to find this. Oh, Becky. Can, I don't know. Are you gonna interrupt me? Well, no. Aww. Although I know you can find this on Spotify. Uh, funny story, guys. Angie no, had to uh, upload our podcast because I was at a conference. I did a great job. She did a great job. The only thing is she didn't follow like three things I told her not to do. But on top of it, when she was supposed to type in the information on our stuff, I said, well, why don't you just type it in? She's like, I just can't remember it off the top of my head. I can't. I've been saying it for so over two years. So I just went years and copied and pasted it. Off of our website at thefreerotation.com. Becky. But here's the funny thing. Okay, since we're going into this. Becky had pulled up it on her Samsung. It was like, I told you to use spaces. I said, I, I did use spaces. I shift entered and spaced. Well, thank you, Apple. Thank you, for Spotify. Showing the spaces. For fucking me over. It wasn't Spotify. It was Spotify on my thing. That was oh, the was issue. It? Yeah. So, so you can find us at the Facebook. Joy I experienced. Talking. I'm turning your microphone <laughs> off. We'll just stop talking for a second. We can find us on Facebook at the Free Rotation Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at the Free Rotation. Hello. You can also find us on Instagram at the Free Rotation Hello. Podcast. Okay. We're on YouTube and Twitch at the Free Rotation. Hey, we are also affiliates of Weeby Geeks. Check out all the great podcasts over there at WeebyGeeksPC.com. No, we are not on Spotify. Do our website. Check, we can check out all of our backlog at the Free Rotation.com. Okay, thanks. Bye. Oh, wait. Wait. You got to turn your mic up back on. I already did. Okay, cool. Woman, Lucifer did it for me <laughs> with his mind. We have landed a fantastic interview. For those of you who are familiar with podcasts and get excited about the <laughs> wait, no wait, wait, podcast. Wait, 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 wait. You just said if you're familiar with podcasts and we are a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> Nicole Goodnight has agreed to do an interview with us and just be on our, pod- on our podcast on our show that's so awesome. i am incredibly excited so yeah keep harping on angie to make this happen no, don't harp on me she's giving me your email and i'm gonna send over the show notes of what we have planned i just need <clears> to talk <throat> with y'all and make sure we you know it is not my fault you're our be executive inclusive. Pre- yeah but i like to be inclusive and make sure you guys are happy with it i'm totally happy that's with not it. A bad i'm thing. fine with it i'll just have no, the show it's a- okay we gotta go back okay bye ew what's on the table kitty cat lucifer oh okay Yeah.